Done? Yes. Okay, I've started. Hello, and welcome to Vagrant Hippopotamus. Um, <clears throat> it's a wet and gloomy night. Eve well, I guess night, not really evening anymore. <coughs> and Noel Palmateer. This is our special friend, Jono, and of course, Billy is with us. He's behind the camera. I always am behind the camera. So we're bringing you another movie review. Uh, well, not well, not really a, anything professional or fancy. Spooky. Yes, thank you, spooky. We're going to try and make this a regular thing, but if you couldn't tell from the from the title, oh my god, we watched The Frighteners tonight. Now, you might be wondering why I'm actually aiming this at Noel's f cracked phone screen and not the case of the movie, as was with Cry Wolf. Cry underscore wolf. Well, we watched Frighteners on YouTube when I rented it. We do not have an actual copy of it. This is more of a spur of the moment kind of thing. It's a fun movie, though, from 1996, <clears throat> might I add, just to throw that out there, because I, I did look it up. Um, but it is right. a horror comedy. Yeah. Quite the fun film still, even after all this time. The oh. animations have not aged the greatest, I will admit that, but I still find it quite enjoyable nonetheless. Should we actually tell people what the movie's about? Or? Yes, we should. All right, so let me see if I can get, like, a better description of this, better than I did for Cry underscore Wolf. That movie sucked. Yes, that movie <laughs> did suck. If you haven't watched our really bad rant about how, ba about how much that movie sucked, well, go watch it. It'll probably be in a playlist with this one, since I have a compulsive need <clears throat> to add videos to specific playlists in a weird attempt to organize YouTube. <laughs> yes. Anyway, for those who d haven't seen it, which it's from 1996, why haven't you seen it? Uh, the Frighteners is a horror comedy, as Noel mentioned, about Michael J. Fox's character, Frank Bannister, who, after a traumatic car accident which t which killed his wife, got the gained the ability to see, speak with, and interact with ghosts. Spirits. Spirits, yes. Now, in the in the beginning of the movie, he uses this ability to kind of screw over the people of the town of the town he lives in by using some ghost friends of his to falsify hauntings. <laughs> Which is pretty amusing, actually. All to build this dream house that he didn't actually get very far on, if I'm going to be perfectly honest. Anyway, after uh, what were you going to keep going with it, or I'm just you? Saying, I mean, this this place was like a small mansion. It had like four floors and. Half the walls were missing, most of it was still tarped off. It had four <laughs> floors, half a roof, three walls. <laughs> pretty much. It's like, holy crap. <laughs> anyway, pretty early into the movie, Frank, Frank meets Lucy, the female lead of the movie, and her husband, Ray. Because I don't know why I emphasize Ray. Ray. Anyway, they're his latest, oh. I guess, victims. Uh, Remember, what was it? I believe. Oh yeah, thirty-seven. Yes, uh, after he finished his with his his bad exorcism of the very fake haunting, he notices Ray, <laughs> kind of a dick, has the number thirty-seven glowing on his forehead for some weird reason. Okay, I would like to put in a little more detail on that. Oh my god! Because yes, Ray is an asshole, but he was kind of a dick to Michael J. Fox because I kind of forgot his name. Frank. Frank, because... Michael Frank Fox. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but he was being mean to Frank because Frank literally crashed his car into the dude's front yard not once, but twice. I'm pretty sure the second time was on purpose. Yeah, well, would that really be considered being mean to him? <laughs> Michael Frank Fox is kind of a douche. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, God. throughout the town, murders start occurring. People die randomly. They say of heart attacks, but, you know, there's no, there isn't, of course, any evidence of heart attacks. And it turns out they all have numbers on their, carved into their foreheads, each one uh, going up from the 37, which we initially saw. As you could probably guess, Ray dies, and he, we get some fun parts with him annoying Michael J. Fox's character for a while <laughs> and, as they attend his funeral. And he's the only one crying, really. I love the part when he fell into his own grave, and then he started screaming at him for to get help out, and he just stood there watching him while he got buried again. <laughs> are we gonna Are we gonna keep breaking off from this, like the train of thought that I'm trying to keep on the tracks? Hey, hey, hey we're, we're, we're kind of on track here. 
He just kept whining his eyes at him constantly. Yeah, kind of. Sorry, um... Anyway, alright, so, where were we? Alright, murders, people dying. Everyone seems to... Everyone thinks it's Frank because it seems like wherever he goes, that's where the next person gets murdered. So, they bring in this fe this federal agent guy to kind of help sort things out. Da Dammers, I think, was his name. He is a complete freaking tool. Like, he is a, he is a goddamn psychopath. Wait, is that the black-haired dude? Yeah, that was the, yeah, that was the, that was the federal agent, dude. Yeah, kind of like that. He had that, but his hair is just, like, greased down all grossly. He just had to constant. I know everything. Kind of look. Yeah, he did. He really, really did. Oh, yeah. The part when he puked because a woman yelled at him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apparently Dammers can't talk to women. Or he can, well, he can, but he can't stand them yelling at him. Probably some mommy issues there, but they didn't really expand on that, so we're just we're left to guess. The <laughs> we're all the same. Uh, Alright, so... <laughs> as more people die in the movie and more of Frank's past is revealed by Dammers, no, no less, we are... Uh, we are eventually led to believe that maybe Frank does have something to do with the murders. But, and they arrest him. But luckily, nope, it wasn't him. It was actually some Grim Reaper looking, gr Grim Reaper looking spirit. Ugh, sorry. Very animalistic. Yeah, he was really, he he crawled like a, he really was like animalistic for a Grim Around Reaper. Like, a werewolf. like even the ghosts actually had a very almost natural <laughs> movement to him when his was... When, when it was a, was his was like jerky. erratic and then it was or definitely sporadic. erratic it almost he was jumping around and just kind of launching himself forward oh, like he was like a wolf like... or something which uh, yeah i think that was actually part of the part of what they were going for like he was like a wolf on the hunt no, honestly for being a horror comedy these are one of the movies that actually really freaked me out when i was a kid same I'm and like i evil dead which i just evil... love because it's hilarious I never watched the original Evil Dead's. I just watched Army of Darkness eight okay, thousand times. All right, so should, should we finish this review? Yeah, so we're, we're kind of jumping around here. All right, so after it's revealed that Frank has nothing to do with it, turns out the Grim Reaper is actually the ghost of Jake Busey, Gary Busey's son. I actually, oh, Jesus, <laughs> this isn't very professional. We're still kind of getting into this Jake whole review Busey. thing. Yes, we're still kind of getting into this whole review thing, and we didn't really plan this out. This is like the second review we've done in like five months. That's true. Ever. <laughs> anyway. I don't know. It's. I liked this part of the movie, but they I guess they were trying to make it like some big like twist or something. But if you actually pay attention, they bring up numerous facts about uh, numerous facts and clues like heck in the beginning of the movie. They even mention how Jake Busey's character and one of uh patricia uh this chick he was with i think you mean atricia yes atricia the p is silent anyway <laughs> they go on the jake Busey's character was an orderly in an in a mental institution and one day he and his 15 year old girlfriend just kind of go on a killing spree and murder 12 people and anyway jake Busey is sent to prison and and put in the electric chair Patricia is locked up for some years, but then released to her in her mother's care, and the movie takes place about thirty years after that. Anyway, it turns out that Jake Bu that Jake Busey's character, who is brought up numerous times throughout the movie, is actually the Grim Reaper, and that he has been continuing his killing spree, as evidenced by the car the number carvings in the in their foreheads. They started from twelve, which they left off at, and get to I believe. 40 by the end of the movie? 41. No, no, the, the no, no. Lucy yeah, was four. No, Lucy was 41 and she no, no, survives. No, no. Yeah, but remember um, when Frank like falls through the floor, the slicked hair guy gets shot in the face. Oh yeah, I guess. Just... Oh yeah, I guess technically, I guess technically, Dammers does die because Patricia, being seduced by her ghost boyfriend serial killer guy. <laughs> convinces her to kill a bunch more people so she gets a shotgun with seemingly unlimited shells and tries to kill them and ends up using the last shell to blow off Dammer's head. 
And honestly, one of the most satisfying head, like head blowing up scenes I think has been put to film. Well, yeah, his ghost been... had popped out in place of it. Yes, oh, his God, head is immediately it. replaced with his ghost's head, which was pretty friggin' funny. <laughs> it, it, it's kind so, of a cheesy movie, but it's still really. So funny. anyway, <laughs> after that whole thing is revealed, Dammers is dead. It's kind of just Frank and Lucy getting in a fight with Jake Busey's character and Patricia. God damn, why can't I remember Jake Busey's character's name? It, ulti- it ultimately culmin- culminates in Patricia killing Frank, yep. him killing her, James? and... Sorry, James? James? Yeah, yeah. Oh, James Bartlett, that's it. It's James Bartlett. Bartlett. Oh my god. Anyway, yeah. yes, Patricia kills Frank. Frank kills Patricia and takes her into... What he calls the corridor, which is the gateway to the afterlife. Bartlett follows them and ends up actually getting Patricia back. And they try to escape, thinking that they're going to go back to Earth. When in reality, they're eaten by a giant hell worm filled with more giant hell worms. They go into a lake of fire. Yeah, which proceeds to (laughs) dive into a lake of fire, because I guess that's hell in that movie. I loved it. Yeah. Frank meets a couple of his ghost friends and his dead wife in heaven, but... As with all movies like this, it's not his time, so he gets another chance at life. He and Lucy he and Lucy fall in love. They tear down his, quote, dream house. Lucy can now see ghosts because they, cause they both see Dammer's very displeased spirit in the back of the, of the town sheriff's car. Which she makes a comment of. Yep, and then the movie yes. ends. That was like I mean, literally his expression in the car. I mean, like, we, like we've been saying all through this, it... It has not aged well in terms of CG, but honestly, I think it stands up well. It is just as much, f- uh, it is just as enjoyable to watch as it was for me when I was a kid. Can I give it a very honest rating, my my opinion first? Yes. I will give it out of 10, a 7. You know what, I would, a soft seven. you know, I would honestly probably give it about a 7, maybe 7.5 too. It's... It is a genuinely creative, genuinely funny movie. The story is very good. Yeah, the story is very good. It gets dark, pleasantly dark in many parts. <laughs> Has actually not all the CG is so bad. Like I really liked the all the stuff they did with the ghosts. That was looked really good. Like I'm pretty sure it got me like an eight or a nine if it you know had, had better, better graphics, graphics, but nonetheless it was. Still very yeah, some, enjoyable. Yeah, some of the graphics, like when uh, Bartlett is morphing through like walls and shit, and the uh, end with the worms, that stuff kind of took me out of it just because of how sloppy it looked. But I'll, but again, most of it is just so good; it really does hold up even today. And I mean, we were lo- I was looking up this movie. It may it took about twenty six million dollars to make. They only made back about twenty nine million dollars at the box office, so they three barely, so they made back their money and barely anything else. About three million more. That's not. Yeah, so that that's w- not a big success. So I believe that would actually Sadly. be considered a commercial failure for a movie, which is unfortunate because it was, that's... it is a really good movie if you look past the negatives. It's fun. Like I said, it's funny. It's in. It's a creative movie. It's interesting. It's got. It's got a lot of fun characters. I'm not actually surprised that it has since gained a cult following because it definitely deserves it. It is a good movie, and we I would sug- I think we'd all suggest that any that any one of you that haven't seen it pick it up, or if you have seen it, why not watch it again? It's definitely worth multiple viewings. And if you don't have the videos, it's very cheap on YouTube, I guess. Yeah, you can $3. rent. Yeah, you can rent it for like three bucks on YouTube. Again, we're not monetized. I'm just saying that's how we did it. Yeah, we're not monetized. But, we're- remember, I mean, this is. It's it's has its rough spots, but again, it's from '96. CG was very new at that time. I was only three years old. Or at least, you know, getting to be more advanced. Yeah, I mean, honestly, around that time, the best I think anyone had really heard of CG would probably be around Jurassic Park, and that movie is just kind of difficult to follow in terms of CG. Let's be honest. The animatronics helped that one. Oh, yeah, CG and animatronics. It wasn't even so much CG as it was the animatronics. I know, but... Well, there was actually, there was actually a, an, a, a really big amount of CG, a like, with bit. wide so- with like all the wide shots and such they did, which, while not as realistic today, do hold up really well. 
haven't rewatched that earlier this year, and it still holds up. Yeah, I mean, I think we can all agree that Jurassic Park is a great movie, but we're also getting a little bit mm-hmm. off topic. Jonna, what did you think of the movie? Do you have anything to add about the Frighteners? One out of ten. I'd say it was pretty good. I'd probably give it like a 6.5. Yeah, there you go. I mean... Yeah, he's not as forgiving about CG as we are. (laughs) Yeah, it was was really goofy looking. He's more of an Echo Bridge kind of fan. Oh, God. Not (laughs) Echo Bridge. Okay, you know I'm joking. Those movies are just hilarious. Fuck Echo Bridge. And we will will definitely be bringing you some Echo Bridge content. That you can be Uh, sure of now. The secret kingdom. We'll just have to. But yeah... Yeah, you're they, not allowed to eat if we watch that movie again. Put down those <laughs> Cheetos. We're to, we need to finish this video. Okay, all right, let's finish it up. Anyway, the Frighteners and really, the Frighteners, an overall great movie, <laughs> if not a little goofy at some points, especially with the CG dammers and some of the cheesy dialogue. But I mean, mid '90s, you got to expect that kind of thing because that was every movie possible. Yes. But, yeah. So, Noel, 7 out of 10. Me, 7 out of 10. Jono, 6.5 out of 10. So, yeah, that's a pretty good score. About average, a little over average. We'd like to hear your thoughts on it, though. I think that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, anyone who's watching this, if you want to comment what you think about The Frighteners, if you've never seen it, or if you might want to see it (laughs) after seeing this really poorly thought-out review, then (laughs) why not give us a shout-out? I never thought I would say that unironically. (laughs) <laughs> anyway, about time we wrap this up. I've been Billy. Thank you for watching. I'm Noel, and this is Jono. You can say his own name. And we've, we've... Yeah, this is definitely going on the video. That's literally the ending theme that yeah. we haven't used yet. Yeah, we need, we, we need we need to... I we need to put the you. we need to put the music in some of our videos sometime <laughs> and can I maybe. Can I just mention that I thought that was the same song as in the beginning? <clears throat> it kind of was. It was like a continuation. Oh no! I just did that part twice. That's oh. not actually the beginning song. The beginning song is like um, what was it? Anyway, we've been Vagrant Hippopotamus. Thank you for watching and good night.